Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Radhar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhakta Rinna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So continue reading from the Advaita Prakash by the disciple of Lord Advaita, the direct disciple of Lord Advaita, Nisha Nagara. I'm hearing so many nice pastimes about Lord Advaita, who is incarnation of a combined form of Lord Shiva and Mahavishnu appearing in Chaitanya Leela, the incarnation of Lord Chaitanya 500 years ago. And his personality of Godhead in five features, and this feature of Godhead is the devotee, as a devotee, personality of a devotee. So, I've always seen Lord Advaita as like an old, older person with white hair and a beard. And I'm hearing now about his pastimes and his appearance as a child, about how he appeared to um, devotee parents and about his childhood activities and how unusual he is because he is an incarnation of the Lord. And uh, so we're hearing these different pastimes and his wonderful relationship with uh, Madhavendra Puri. And I believe he accepted Madhavendra Puri, was accepted as a disciple of Madhavendra Puri. Yes, yes. And um, because the Lord always shows by his activities how to act as a devotee. So, of course, personality of God, it doesn't need a spiritual master. He is the original spiritual master. But he's showing He's instructing by his activities. So that's a real spiritual master, one who shows by example. <laughs> so he's showing by example. He's accepting a wonderful devotee, Madhavendra Puri, as his spiritual master. And then he also has a, a wonderful relationship with Haridas Thakur very um, very close and they shared a lot of realizations and personal ecstasies with each other in uh, devotional service and Lord and Haridas Thakur is an incarnation of Lord Brahma so when the Lord appears his associates and his devotees they also appear the Lord never appears alone and to in, take part in his pastimes, they may appear a certain way. So this is uh, about Lord Advaita from his surrendered disciple, his devotee. So this is chapter 10. And this is Ishan Nagara narrating. All glories to Sri Krishna Chaitanya. All glories to Sitana. All glories to Nityananda, along with all the devotees. One day, while taking bath in the Ganges, 
and loudly chanting the name of Hari. Advaitacharya thought, When will Lord Garanga appear so that my mind and body will find satisfaction? He then offered flowers, Tulsi, and Ganges water at the feet of Lord Krishna with loving devotion. By Advaita's loud calling and flower offering, Lord Krishna became anxious to appear. When Advaita saw that the flower offering was floating upstream, he understood that it was Krishna's mercy and rushed to follow it. Remembering the holy names, Haridas also followed. The computer did something funny here. But we're back. Haridas also followed until the flowers entered Nadia. Advaita Prabhu then said, Listen, dear Haridas, Krishna Chandra will appear in this village. Today we have seen evidence that the prediction given in Sri Ananta Sanhita will come true. At that time, the pregnant wife of Jagannath Misra, Sachi Thakurani, who's non different from Sri Ashoda, was taking bath in the Ganges. While bathing, the flowers came and remained touching her body. Sachi thought to herself, What inauspicious thing is happening today? I'm pushing these flowers away, but they return and stick to my body. Quickly finishing her bath, she returned to the river bank. In an ecstatic trance, Advaita Prabhu could understand that she was the mother of Lord Krishna. Seeing that she was pregnant, Advaita thought Krishna Chandra would appear from her womb. In order to find out, he offered his obeisances to the unborn child. But because the child was, was ordinary, there was a miscarriage. Sachi was most unhappy because of the miscarriage. So she quickly took bath and returned home. When Jagannath Misra saw his wife's morose condition, he asked her, Why do you look so unhappy today? Sachi said. One old Brahmin came from somewhere, and when he offered obeisances, I had a miscarriage. Jagannath replied, He was simply an instrument. Actually, the Lord is the cause of all events. Give up your lamentation. Remember Lord Narayan, who vanquishes all inauspiciousness. Meanwhile, after consideration, Advaita Acharya opened a school in Navadweep in anticipation of Garanga's appearance. All the respectable scholars of Nadia visited Advaita and accepted him as their teacher. Srivas Thakur, the incarnation of Narada Muni, enjoyed unlimited happiness in association of Advaita Prabhu. During the day, Advaita would teach Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam to his students, or, according to the desire of the students, he would sometimes teach the Vedas and Smritis. At night, he would meet Haridas, and they would loudly chant the holy names together. Seeing Advaita Prabhu's wonderful activities, Vishnu Das Acharya took initiation in the holy names from him. He studied Srimad Bhagavatam under Advaita Prabhu with many other Vaishnavas. Others, like Nandini and Vasudev Dat, also felt fortunate to receive initiation from the Lord. When Advaita Prabhu discussed topics regarding Lord Krishna with his many disciples, he sometimes spoke incoherently in transcendental madness. Advaita Prabhu offered obeisances to one after another of Sachi's embryos, yet each one died. When the eighth pregnancy also entered, ended in miscarriage, Sachi was most unhappy. She cried and said to her husband, All my children have died because Advaita offered his obeisances. What will you do to maintain our family line? And hearing Sachi's lamentation, Jagannath Misra, the best of the Brahmins, 
went anxiously to see Advaita Prabhu. He offered obeisances and glorified Advaita in various ways. Advaita blessed him, offered him a seat, and said, What brings you here? Jagannath Mishra with folded hands replied, I'm taking shelter at your feet. If I have committed any offense to you, please forgive me. This is my only request. Please be merciful so that my family line may continue. Dvaita Prabhu said, Go back to your house for now. I will do whatever is required. Receiving Advaita Prabhu's instruction, Mishra returned home and told Sachi about his assurance. The next day, after finishing his morning duties, Advaita quickly went to Jagannath Mishra's house. When Advaita arrived at his house, Mishra, the best of the Brahmins, took grass between his teeth and went out to greet him. He offered Advaita his obeisances, a seat, various articles of worship. Then Sachi Devi came and offered her obeisances, and Advaita blessed her, saying, Dear child, may you have a son. Hearing his benediction, Jagannath Misra said, Kindly do something to make your words come true. Advaita replied, I received a mantra in a dream. You should both chant this mantra with loving devotion. By doing so, all inauspiciousness will disappear. You'll get a divine, learned son. Hearing Advaita's instruction, they went to take bath. On their return, Advaita Chanda worshipped Narayan, according to regulation, and then gave them the four-syllable Gora Gopal Mantra. They felt jubilant on receiving the mantra and humbly offered prayers and obeisances to Advaita. Advaita blessed them, saying, Krishna Matirastu, let your attention be on Krishna. And after taking his meal, he returned home. After some days, Sachi again became pregnant, and as a result, Vishvarupa, the abode of all good qualities, was born. Advaita Prabhu addressed him as Maha Sankarshan, and even Lord Brahma does not know his glories. People were amazed at how renounced he was from his birth. He used to preach devotional service with Advaita Charya. Now I will describe how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. For people are blessed by hearing such narrations. As Sri Advaita Charya performed his daily worship of Lord Krishna, he would loudly call out, Gorahari. By this loud calling of Advaita Prabhu, Krishna's mind became restless. Thus Krishna mercifully descended in the town of Navadvip to fulfill the predictions of the scriptures. Advaita Charya could understand from Sachi Devi's bodily effulgence that the moonlike gore Sri Goranga would soon appear from the milk ocean womb of Mother Sachi. One morning, Advaita Prabhu was worshipping Krishna on the bank of the Ganges with Tulsi, sandalwood paste, and flowers. He offered flowers three times to the waters of the Ganges, which he considered a form of Lord Krishna. By the will of Lord Krishna, the flowers that he offered swiftly sailed to the side of Mother Sachi as before. Seeing this, the astonished Sachi Deva unhappily thought, who has again deliberately sent flowers like this? Quickly pushing aside the flowers in Tulsi, she came out of the river bank, chanting the names of Ram, Narayan, Hari. On seeing this, Anwaita Prabhu roared in ecstatic love and repeatedly chanted the name of Gorahari. Then Advaita Prabhu, the husband of Sita Devi, circumambulated Mother Sachi and offered obeisances to the child in her womb. Sachi Devi exclaimed, Wait, Acharya Thakur, wait. I'm becoming an offender by these actions of yours. When you previously offered obeisances like this, you caused the death of my child. Now please tell me wh why you are again offering obeisances to me, your disciple. Saying this, Sachi offered her obeisances to Avaita, who in turn blessed her, saying, O oh, mother, I promise you there's no fear. From your womb you will get a son like Krishna himself. Hearing this, Sachi went home in great happiness. 
and Advaita Prabhu chanted the holy names in transcendental madness. <laughs> when Sachi's pregnancy passed ten months, Krishna Chandra had still not manifested. After twelve months had passed, Jagannath Misra and others became worried. Nilambar Chakravati, the father of Sachi Devi, was as expert as Gargamuni in astrology. He made astrological calculations and then disclosed to those assembled that within the womb of his daughter was a great saintly person who would take his birth at an auspicious time after 13 months of pregnancy had passed. When he further predicted that the child's appearance would be the source of all auspiciousness for the people of the world, all those present were overwhelmed with joy. Then, at the auspicious moment, Sri Chaitanya appeared from the womb of Sachi, as Nishingadev appeared from the stone pillar. The Supreme Personality of Godhead has no connection with the illusory energy. He is the ocean of love and the embodiment of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. Wherever he resides is Vrindavan. He manifests his transcendental body to deliver the living entities. His father, mother, friends, and abode are all fully spiritual and eternally full of bliss. Feeling the burden of responsibility for the living entity's suffering, the Supreme Lord appears along with his associates. The son of Nanda accepted the complexion and mood of Shumati Radharani with three desires in mind. Thus, he appeared with a golden complexion in the district of Nadia to distribute loving devotional service and bless the world. On the full moon night of the Palgun month, February, March, in the year 1486, there was a lunar eclipse as Rahu covered the moon. During the auspicious moment when the moon and ascendant were in the sign of Leo, Mother Earth was in a joyful mood of devotion to Krishna. That evening, as everyone chanted the transcendental name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna advented in the form of Lord Garanga. Although everyone was already happy in the ocean of Krishna's holy festival, their happiness expanded due to the lunar eclipse. Some pure-hearted persons gave in charity, some danced and some chanted, Haribo! In Radhadesh, Nityananda Prabhu roared in ecstasy like a thundercloud on the occasion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance. Garanga's bodily hue resembled the golden moon, so his maternity room was illumined as if by yellow moonshine. His hands extended to his knees, and his eyes resembled the lotus flower. I am unable to describe even a portion of his beauty. Mother Sachi was bewildered on seeing her child's divine form. Jagannath considered the child to be an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, began offering prayers. Seeing this, Gaurachanda expanded his yoga maya internal energy so that the couple looked on him as their son. All living entities became joyful on the appearance of Lord Krishna, and the devotees drown in loving devotion. When Advaita understood that Krishna had appeared as Sri Chaitanya, he considered himself fortunate and roared loudly. Haridas and other devotees engaged in congregational chanting. Some of the devotees danced in ecstasy, and some fell unconscious. From the time of his birth, Shikaranga acted like a great sage by keeping his eyes closed and refused to drink milk. Seeing this, Sachidev began crying and others headed by Jagannath Misra became distressed. At that time, my Prabhu, Advaitacharya, went there to see his Lord. On Advaita's arrival, Jagannath Misra offered his obeisances and Advaita Prabhu inquired about the cause of their lamentation. Jagannath Misra replied, O Prabhu, you know everything. You have given us the wealth of a son, but now it appears he is indifferent to us. Advaita Prabhu said, Oh, Misra, don't worry. There's no doubt that your son will be fine. 
saying this, Advaita Prabhu went inside the maternity room. When Sachi saw Advaita Prabhu, she held his feet and began to cry. Advaita told Sachi, Oh, mother, don't cry. Stand aside. Your son will be fine. Receiving the Acharya's instruction, Mother Sachi went to the side as Advaita Prabhu approached the child. When Lord Govinda, in the form of Gore, saw Advaita overflowing with loving ecstasy, he smiled brightly. Advaita Charya was immersed in pure love on seeing that Krishna, in his original form, had appeared. When Advaita returned to his external senses, he offered obeisances to Gore with folded hands and submitted. O oh Lord, the servant of yours has been waiting for you in this world for the last 52 years. This material world is a dark hole full of contamination. Seeing this condition, we have become fearful. Therefore, with great eagerness, I have come here to see you, for by seeing you, our fears are mitigated. I wandered to distant lands looking for you, but due to my misfortune, I was unable to find you. Now. My long-cherished desire is fulfilled, and the moon of Gokula has risen in Navadvi. Gore replied, I'm always controlled by my devotees. My appearance and disappearance is only by their desire. Shirdwaiti Prabhu said, Since you have come to this world, why are you not taking milk? <laughs> Gore said, Oh, Panchanana, you are intoxicated with loving devotion and have forgotten the regulations. You should give Harinam before giving mantra so that one's oral reception is purified by the influence of the holy names. If someone chants a mantra with impure senses, then his initiation is certainly incomplete. You have given mantra diksha to Mother Sachi before she received the holy names. Therefore, I have not drunk her milk. Advaita Prabhu then asked, How does one chant the holy names? Lord Garanga replied, One should chant the sixteen eternally perfect names as follows. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Although Advaita Charya was familiar with these sixteen names, when he heard them from the lips of Garanga, he became overwhelmed with love. Advaita Prabhu considered himself fortunate as he took Gore in his arms and slowly went under the nimba tree. He lay Gore down and chanted the name of Hari. By the touch of Gore's feet, that tree was delivered. Advaita Prabhu then called for Sachi. He gave her the holy names and reminded her of the mantra he had previously given. Advaita Prabhu then brought Gore and placed him on the lap of Mother Sachi. Gore then drank his mother's milk. Seeing this, Mother Sachi was filled with joy, and Jagannath Mishra and the others happily chanted the holy names. The Brahmins and their wives blessed the child as Advaita Prabhu gave him the name Nimai. The husband of Sita then loudly chanted, Hari, Hari, and everyone assembled said that Advaita must be none other than Lord Vaidyanath, Lord Shiva. Advaita Prabhu said, Why do you flatter me? The child was cured by the influence of the neem tree. Who can count the qualities of the neem tree? Its shade can cure all diseases of the living entity. Its fragrance can drive away ghosts and witches. Its roots are the abode of Lord Chakrapani, Lord Vishnu. Sitanath then assembled the devotees together, and they passed that night engaged in Sankirtan. Only the topmost fortunate devotee could see those pastimes, but those who desire to see them are also most fortunate. Those pastimes can see be seen only by the mercy of Krishna, cannot be seen by performing pious activities for millions of lifetimes. The Lord's eternal associate Purnamasi, the personification of Yoga Maya and devotional service, 
appeared at Sita Devi, the wife of Sri Advaita. On the day of the holy festival, Sita Devi, Devi was deeply absorbed in love as she meditated on Krishna's pastimes. Within her mind she saw that Krishna had covered his form with the complexion of Radharani and appeared in Navadvi. Seeing this wonderful vision, Sita Devi was overwhelmed with loving devotion. She expanded her potencies and quickly went to Navadvi. When she saw Garanga, she considered her life successful. She offered the child her blessings, along with fresh grass and paddy. Hearing about Sri Chaitanya's appearance in Nadia, many people came to see him. Those who came saw the symptoms of a great personality in the limbs of Gore, and whoever accepted him as the Supreme Lord was indeed blessed. Sri Sachinandana attracted the devotees around him like a magnet attracts iron. As the devotees all joyfully engaged in Sankirtan, the child was given the name Gora. The Brahmin, Nilambar Chakravati, who was equal to Gargamuni in astrology, named the child Vishwambar. Seeing the golden complexion of his son's limbs, Jagannath Misra affectionately named him Goranga. Out of pure affection, Sachi Devi sometimes called her child Gora Chandra and sometimes Gora. Now, everyone, please listen to a wonderful transcendental pastime that was performed by the son of Sachi. Whenever the Lord in his childhood would cry, he would immediately stop crying and smile upon hearing the holy names of Krishna and Hari. On seeing this, many men and women would induce him to cry and then chant the holy names to pacify him. Thus, on the pretext of crying, he induced everyone to chant the holy names. Only the devotees could understand the confidential truth about Lord Garanga. Seeing Gora's amazing habit, all the ladies joyfully named the child Gorahari. All the pure devotees, who were intoxicated with loving devotion, named the Lord Sri Gora Govinda. In the course of time, Jagannath Misra held the ceremony of offering first rice to the child. He then fed everyone present with Vishnu Prashad. The childhood pastimes of Lord Garanga are like an ocean of nectar of which a fallen soul, like me, cannot touch even a drop. On an auspicious day, when Gora was five years old, Jagannath Misra started the child's education by teaching him to write. Gora was a Shrutidar who could memorize anything immediately, so he learned the alphabet within a very short time. Jagannath Misra then put Gora in Gangadas Pandit school, and within two years he learned Sanskrit grammar. Seeing this, Gangadas Pandit was astounded. In due course of time, Bhar Bharati gave Gora the sacred thread, and Jagannath Misra gave him a Vishnu mantra according to Vedic injunctions. What can an insignificant being like me know of the unfathomable pastimes of Lord Garanga? I'm simply writing in brief whatever I have heard from my Lord Advaita Prabhu, praying at the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya and Sri Advaita, always desiring their mercy, I, Isha Nagara, narrate Sri Advaita Prakash. Hare Krishna.